What is going on? It is Sunday, February 26th, 2022, and I'm here with your bio update. Yes, so uh, I skipped yesterday because I was uh, working on a video and then I got distracted because I had to do a lot of different chores and other things like that. But today I'm back at it full force and I intend to sort of make up for it by kind of combining what I was going to talk about yesterday with what I was going to talk about today. And there's quite a bit, um, but uh, I'm going to compress it all because um, this is one of those subjects where in bio you can go down a rabbit hole, right? Uh, and I'm definitely in a rabbit hole uh, subject right now uh, because last time I was talking about the cell cycle and um, I was talking about uh, essentially progression of the cell cycle through cyclins and cyclin kinase activity uh, and the presence of those uh, combined causing a phosphorylation of certain targets which cause chain events uh, or yeah, chain uh, chain reaction events of proteins which cause um, the cell to propagate through its different cell cycles uh, or cell phase cell cycle phases okay so that in itself is quite a you know, extraordinary number of uh, pieces that are involved there um, and uh, it's important to talk about you know the different checkpoints right uh, that occur and allow a progression to uh, through the cell cycle so um, there's several of those checkpoints uh, I think one of the more I, they're all interesting in their own right too uh, and they all have different things that look at they're looking at for example some are looking at is looking at if DNA has been replicated properly um, there's others checkpoints another checkpoint looking at the amount of DNA and the cell size um, but I think one of the most interesting personally interesting checkpoints uh, is the um, checkpoint between um, prophase and anaphase okay so uh, pro sorry metaphase and anaphase um, and that is called the spindle assembly checkpoint so why is this so interesting because it's actually like all the checkpoints have complexities to them but this spindle assembly checkpoint requires uh, the proper action of a very unique process uh, and it's one that's well known uh, in, to everybody in the bio world but especially if you study mitosis and what under uh, underpins mitosis or undergirds the whole mito mitotic process but uh, essentially how does metaphase just remember what met what metaphase is right metaphase is basically when chromosomes line up along the metaphase plate and then they are pulled apart uh, they trans uh, they transfer to anaphase when they are pulled apart and uh, their the sister chromatids are dragged towards the opposing centrioles at opposing poles by um, microtubules right or they're attached to microtubules there and then they uh, separate to the separate poles now that's crazy because you can we in those few words there's an entire universe of detail like how does all of that happen right so um I'm just going to assume some knowledge right now because I'm not going to go into it too much in detail right yet. I will at some point, but uh, we have we are talking about microtubules, right? A macrotubule attachment. What is a microtubule, right? So in in short, a microtubule is a dynamically uh, a dynamically generated uh, tension load bearing element uh, that is has the f shape of a tube and is constructed uh, spontaneously uh, based on the attachment to a an element of the chromosome called the kinetic core okay again so many things going on there we have to talk about kinetic cores microtubules i'm going to assume that you know about my, all these all a few of these things uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the kinetic force. So if you've seen, and by the way, let's just quickly just say what we're doing goal-wise. The spindle assembly checkpoint is the place at which 
we make sure that the attachment is uh, has occurred properly, right? Uh, how does the how does that making sure happen? Well, if uh, essentially these chromosomes uh, are they're called the behavior the, it's called bi-oriented attachment if the chromosomes are lined up properly if they're attached uh, to the center of the the chromosome the vestibule by the uh, microtubule right the spindle refers to all the different microtubule attachments on one side and then on the other side right the centrosome attachment uh, all occurs as well in the same manner and the t the attachment is balanced such that the uh, chromosomes uh, travel over evenly to each side uh, in uh, equal number the sister chromatids for example it's possible that the attachment could be wrong and this there could be more chromatids going to one side than the other then that spindle assembly checkpoint will not pass and Again, what goes into the spindle assembly checkpoint to make sure it passes and make sure this assembly is correct? Because remember, the intelligence, quote unquote, here is more of a chemical intelligence that's going on or biochemical intelligence. Um, what goes into uh, what goes into the spindle assembly checkpoint? Well, first of all, the only way the cell really knows that this attachment is correct, right? There's a differencing mechanism that checks the tension to tell whether the tension on the centromere has detected uh, correct, microtub uh, uh, correct microtubule to kinetic core attachment for all of these chromosomes. Um, so that tension detection process is quite complicated, but they did prove through some clever techniques that it is tension that is the driving force. So you can actually fake tension, uh, fake a false tension by through like very uh, sophisticated, um, sophisticated micro manipulation techniques, uh, pulling on the uh, chromosomes in a specific way to kind of force the spindle assembly checkpoint to pass because the chromosomal attachment is tension based essentially. So, um, if you get the right tension, you can pass the uh, spindle assembly checkpoint, and that in itself seems like there's a lot of problems there, right? Because the incorrect attachment could have the right tension, right? Um, so, but it's most, I guess, evolutionarily speaking, since this is a highly conserved process across species, they probably, through many iterations of trial and error and survival, what survived uh, was this, that uh, the this tension detection where it's sensitive enough kind of to correspond pretty closely with a correct assembly along the metaphase plate of these chromosomes. So, you know, I guess that's what it is. So let's jump to, and by the way, the, once that uh, once that assembly is correctly detected, we have to talk about uh, anaphase promoting complex, which is what gets generated to allow the separation of these chromosomes, right? Because these chromosomes are, you know, they're they're attached and they're being pulled at by these centromeres, right? There's a once the microtubules are attached, there's a persistent uh, tension that's pulling these things apart, but these things have to stay together until the tension is correctly balanced. And what finally pulls them apart is the dissolution of the things that bind these together, which are called cohesin. But let's just go quickly to the kinetic core for a second. So the kinetic core is an exceptionally complicated structure, that uh, protein structure which is attached to the central mirror. Okay, just the centromere is a special section of DNA, right? In the, it's, and remember, this is some people get this confused. Centromere is just DNA, okay? And remember, it's not, it's not just DNA. It's DNA uh, chromatin, which means it's wrapped around histone proteins, okay? But like all of this uh, chromatin is essentially composed of DNA wrapped around histone proteins. We'll talk about histones later, but uh, they're basically stabilizing elements that allow the, this DNA supercoiling to occur and this formation of uh, the chromosome to be like rabbit ear in this way. Okay, so um, and the centromere is a section of that DNA which is specially, especially designated to attach to a kinetic core. So how do we know? How do how do we know what? 
go, what's in a central mirror, like what DNA is there. So the DNA that exists within a central mirror is very AT rich. There's a lots of characteristics. And also the histones that lie uh, in the central mirror, right? central mirror, are of a specific kind of uh, organization and histone protein. Uh, so, like, normally you have this H3 protein, but in the central mirror, let's see if I can find an image of it, in the central mirror, you don't have, you have a mix of another protein called SEN2, uh, which I'm trying to find a good example of, but, oh well, but basically think is of that SEN2 is what the central mirror uh, DNA, central mirror DNA wraps around, the same way that uh, H3 is what um, the uh, normal DNA or non-central mirror DNA wraps around uh, when it's super coiling together, okay, to give it stability. And there's so much that goes into histones uh, because they themselves, uh, we'll get into that, are important um, in like allow in and how they allow the DNA to unfold, etc. But let's go back. The central mirror is just the central section of DNA. The kinetochore is the protein complex of several pieces which attaches to the central mirror and when i say several pieces the kinetic core is vastly complicated it when it assembles together there's three primary primary parts there's the outer kinetic core the inner kinetic core and then there's um there's the at central mirror attachments and all the complexes that are a part of that there's hundreds of protein complexes that have to assemble to form this kinetic core okay and the interesting thing is the the assembly of the kinetic core is interesting in itself but this uh, microtubule is the second interesting part and this microtubule tip uh, there's some good videos out there but essentially this microtubule tip is constantly growing um, and it's being constructed of a, a molecule called tubulin okay tubulin adds to this microtubule creating making it longer right um, microtubules can also contract contract uh, by the use of uh, another protein which signals the microtubule to disassemble but what's happening is there's this constant wrestling going on between the kinetic core and microtubule uh, which basically um, which basically this is uh, the kinetic core trying to hold on to the microtubule and the microtubule trying to make sure uh, the orientation of this entire chromosome is uh, properly geared towards uh, being eventually separated from its sister chromatid. And this, and there are several microtubules that are uh, spread throughout the chromosome on centromeric DNA. So now, actually, one thing I wanted to mention, just quickly jumping back to the central mirror, is that this is kind of like what a human centromeric uh, section is. And these human centromeric sections, there's s several small pieces of uh, centromeric DNA, but you, there's also an a, a arrangement of centromeric uh, DNA called the holotip, holotype centromeric DNA, which basically in things like insects, the centromeric DNA extends all across the, the chromosome. And in those cases where it does, attachment to those um, through microtubules does not just occur here, right? Because like this is where microtubules would detach because this is where the kinetic core is. In those holotypical uh, sections, you would have mini kinetic core attachments all over this chromosome. So I don't know why in insects it has to be different. But that's actually interesting, and I think uh, many people probably study that difference. Um, but anyway, again, going to some more specifics about the components of the kinetic core. You have the inner plate, fibrous corona, right? You have the microtubule, and then this is the centromeric chromatin, which is attached um, here. Uh, so what happens here, right? Like, so it really boils down to, the, remember the tension I was talking about? I could go in all day into the tension that occurs here, but uh, let's just stick to how is this tension detected? So there's multiple mechanisms of detection, detecting this tension on a chromosomic like a kinetic core, okay? Um, and some of them are protein dependent, some of them are just the way the microtubule kind of 
interacts with the kinetic core. And I know that's not a satisfying answer, but there's a lot of chemical uh, level stuff happening at that point. Um, but essentially, there's a, there's a protein called Aurora B, which is involved in tension uh, detection, right, and reorientation and error correction, because the tension you can think of as kind of waving between the correct tension uh, uh, where the correct tension is in the center and waving between higher and lower tensions on either side. So it's kind of like uh, a needle kind of on a count, Geiger counter homing in uh, on the correct measurement. It fluctuates slightly, but it's there. So that's Aurora B is involved in this error correction mechanism. But there's also uh, what happens when the tension is, you know, correct right so essentially um, there is something we should know about this protein called MAD2 MAD2 is a protein complex which binds to unattached kinetic cores okay so if the kinetic core exists and it hasn't been attached to anything no microtubules yet right then you're gonna get all this MAD2 that binds onto it okay so essentially um, when the kinetic core is attached, and if it's attached properly, and this, see, the thing is, you have to understand, this attachment is very complicated, which I've said already, and so I think you understand, but this attachment is a process that kind of, again, corrects itself. If it's uh, not been attached properly, uh, it'll uh, continue, the cell will continue to try to attach it properly. So essentially what happens is for the unattached kinetic core you have MAD2 and then um, as the attachments occur this is a greatly simplified description that I'm giving you as the attachments occur uh, this MAD2 essentially uh, gets kicked off this um, uh, kinetic core and then it combines with a protein called CDK, CD20 right and a few other proteins but essentially this MAD2 combines with CD20 and at that point it becomes active uh, activated into something called the mitotic uh, the mitotic uh, control uh, mitotic checkpoint complex that mitotic checkpoint complex then binds with uh, something called the anaphase promoting complex which then goes on to do the rest of the work of anaphase. Now, that was like so much information in, in a small uh, video. But um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, kind of put that all out there. And the ne next point, I'll be talking about anaphase. I will stay away from the rest of this kinetic core stuff for now because it truly deserves its own like long, long lecture. But yeah, I will, con I will focus on anaphase promoting complex in the next section and talk about uh, everything related there. Okay, uh, well, see you around.